Okay, that's good to hear. The situation is getting better, Rajesh. Is that the experience for you as well? And especially when it comes to personnel movement, uh, uh, you know, we saw this especially with the e-commerce companies yesterday, uh, especially on account of what happened with some instances where, uh, you know, there was uh, police brutality, that people were apprehensive of coming out to work. Uh, what is the situation that you're seeing on the ground? Yeah, so, uh, Shireen, I think uh, the situation is broadly, like, uh, you know, resounding similar to what, uh, you know, the other two companies, uh, you know, we just discussed. So when the when the lockdown essentially came in, uh, I think there was pretty pretty much sort of confusion in terms of uh, which states are will allow trucks to come inside, which states will not. And I think, uh, like, most of, the, uh, most of the state borders have sort of got resolved in terms of what's the clarity. And government, I think, there has made it clearly more black and white. So I think uh, every every factory which is essentially not essential at this point in time has already taken a shutdown and I think uh, that's like uh, very clear black and white so which means companies which do which manufacture steel products companies which manufacture like metals etc have like already taken a shutdown so I think that like that part of the movement for the country has like gone down fully so uh, I think that's part A Part B, in all these state borders, wherever there was confusion, I think uh, you know, customers also have been pretty much proactive. Uh, large companies like Unilever, you know, all of these guys have their sanctions in place to move the goods which they essentially produce. So I think when it started, there was a lot of confusion. As today we speak, I think the situation is back to smooth. Okay, that's good to hear. Uh, also, yesterday, the Ministry of Home Affairs, uh, in its uh, revised notification, has made clear in black and white that interstate travel of goods for the purpose of essential services uh, uh, largely will be under the exempt category. So, uh, uh, Sahil, uh, let's talk about the road ahead now. And some of the issues that, uh, that the industry was facing have been resolved over the last 24 hours. But uh, to ensure that this continues to be smooth, uh, uh, you know, for, for everybody uh, and there is no disruption or dislocation. Uh, what is it that you would like from the authorities from here on? I think one of the most important things that the authorities could do right now is to rapidly digitize this process. I think uh, physical passes, for instance, in the few cities where you had to deal with them uh, have been complicated. I think if there's an ability to provide digital manifests, if there's an ability to provide digital proof that we are carrying essential goods and services, it will just be much faster for us to get these goods to where they have to go. The physical documentation process and checks at borders can actually take quite a lot of time. So I think the first step that has to happen is the issuance of digital passes. This can be done extremely quickly. All of us, all of the three companies on this call are, are definitely tech-enabled enough to be able to absorb those digital passes and use them around the rest of the country. So I think that's one. I think the second thing that the government should think about, of course, is to allow companies like us and like Black Park to self-certify or upload a list of the people who are working with us or working for us so that these can be pre-certified as opposed to actually having to go to every local station and register all of the people who are working with us. So over the next couple of weeks, we will be mobilizing several tens of thousands of people. As an example, at delivery, we will be mobilizing about 40,000 people over the next 48 hours. And if we have to register each of them with 40,000 people over the next 48 hours, and if we have to register each of them with every location, that's going to be a pretty time-consuming and unnecessary deadweight loss. So I'd say digitization one, and the second will be allowing us to actually very quickly certify who works for us and make sure that they're safe, make sure they're available, and they can work uh, sort of without any disruption. Hmm. Well, I think those are both very valid asks that uh, you've put on the table, Sahil, and I do hope that people are listening. Uh, digital, uh, uh, digitization of the process, digital passes, e-passes, and of course self-certification, I think the second one uh, will be crucial as well. Uh, Ashish, you want to add to the list that Sahil has put? You know, one of the things that um, there's been a lot of conversation about, you know, uh, e-commerce companies stepping up, and it's, it's really heartening to see people doing that. But you know, if you combine all the capacities of all B2C e-commerce in the country, I mean, uh, it's a very small percentage of what food and grocery actually, uh, you know, is required. Uh, so I think one stakeholder that, you know, definitely needs a lot more attention is is the Kirana store operator. Uh, you know, we're seeing some challenges on the ground in terms of stores, you know, being shut down. Obviously, administration sort of balancing, you know, between, uh, you know, keeping people indoors in the lockdown, and this is obviously a very critical task. Uh, but what's happening is, you know, in certain places, uh, you know, having stores open 24-7, uh, 
actually reduces the amount of stress on the system. Uh, otherwise, if you actually reduce the number of hours the stores are open, uh, it actually causes more crowding. And, you know, and oftentimes uh, when crowding happens, those stores get shut down. Uh, so we, we have seen instances of that and that, you know, results in panic. So any attempt to actually permit stores to be open 24-7, uh, to keep them open, obviously with social distancing mm. norms, uh, would be very welcome. Uh, it actually makes, more, makes uh, you know, people a lot more comfortable that, you know, whatever supplies that they need actually will be available. It also makes it easier for suppliers, you know, uh, people like us, but also distributors uh, to be able to get to these stores and be able to yeah. keep, keep them stocked up. I think that's one very important thing. And the other thing that I'm, uh, you know, I think is important is while obviously, uh, you know, there, there are a set of rules and regulations being implemented, orders going out, circulars going out. But I think there's, you know, a huge uh, amount of effort required to motivate people who are going out, uh, you know, in the field, delivering mm -hmm. to these places, people like loaders, etc. There's a lot of, uh, you know, uh, obviously yeah. justified concern around, you know, them being out. Um, but and also, you know, police in certain places is not letting people out easily. Uh, but I think if, you know, uh, people at the highest levels, right. potentially even the prime minister were to come out and say, you know, this is an important element of, you know, your national duty. Uh, it'll really help yes. make sure that, you know, all the companies yes. can actually scale up uh, operations. It's absolutely required uh, without this, without, you know, this, without the people at the front lines, yeah. uh, it's going to be very, very difficult. And I think the government really needs to go out and issue a public clarion call to, you know, to, to encourage people to do this. Yeah. I couldn't agree more with you that, yes, that uh, clarion call has to come right from the top because, remember, there are different advisories being issued by all kinds of agencies at the center and the central and the state level, and oftentimes it gets lost in translation or interpretation. Rajesh, we're completely out of time in exactly one minute. Add to the wish list. So I think, um, uh, you know, given primarily we're involved in transporting uh, goods, uh, in large capacity trucks. So if you see, if you leave out the essentials, which typically contribute to 30-40% of the overall Indian economy, the balance 60-70% of the goods are not moving in the country. And uh, given uh, like Blackbuck is typically more a uh, trucker first uh, centric organization, I think most of our truckers do not have jobs to move goods today as we speak. So I think, uh, you know, and most of this industry is highly leveraged. So I think a lot of that, uh, you know, the, the fundamentals of how will these guys be able to repay, how will these guys be, repay their EMIs every month, how will all of this sort of recover become sort of a very unanswered question at this point in time. So I think I'm, I'm pretty sure that government would be looking uh, like into these particular, uh, you know, sort of contexts and would come up with something which is going to enable them. I think that's like point number one. And point number two is that if you look at this entire B2B chain, there are companies which pay companies, like in terms of companies build, build to companies and then they release money. And there are like credit cycles over here. So with this entire knee-jerk reaction of a lockdown, a lot of these large companies, I think, are taking steps towards smaller companies where they are like just deciding not to essentially, you know, sort of, you know, uh, put their yeah. cash flow at risk to these smaller companies. I think that's like mm -hmm. bringing a knee-jerk to the entire economy at this point in time. I think we, Blackbird, being a truck yeah. first company, are able to take care of take take care of all of this. But I think some kind of a sort of an informal mm. structure around these two may may sort of support uh, the trucking fraternity sort of goal go for the long run. All right, uh, gentlemen, many thanks, uh, Rajesh, Sahil, and Ashish, for uh, putting down the pain points that continue to hold and constrain operations at this point in time. Hopefully, uh, those listening in and uh, those in government uh, will, will watch through the COVID helpline and implement and execute on uh, what we've been able to put together here on the program. Appreciate your time here on CNBC TV 18. A quick break. There's a lot more coming up. Don't go anywhere.